are back with the latest updated of ASEAN News, and here they are. Timur Leste's president returns home from a week visit to Swiss. Jose Ramos Horta returned to Timor Leste after participating in the World Economic Forum nearly a week in Switzerland. He was accompanied by a delegation of officials during the visit. During a press conference shortly after landing in the Delhi International Airport, Horta explained, apart from participating in the World Economic Forum, he also had meetings with leaders from various countries to discuss about bilateral relationship, which is linked to various sectors where it can contribute to the Timor Leste's development. I went on a trip to Davos World Economic Forum in Switzerland. I was invited to the meeting by an institution called World Economic Forum. It is not a multilateral system, nor a state-owned. World leaders were all there, more similar to United Nations. Political leaders, experts and economist leaders, and big enterprises were also attended the forum. Timor Leste was invited to the forum this year, and as the president, I invited the government, were represented by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Adel Zizel Magno and Timor Leste's delegation. What was important during the visit were bilateral meetings that was done with the presidents, prime ministers, ministers of foreign affairs, or leaders, as well as some world private sector enterprises. Horten delegation was invited by the World Economic Forum President Borg Brande to visit Switzerland in order to participate in the World Economic Forum. Indonesian mother demands justice for child's dad from tainted calf syrup. Siti Surhardiati, 26, arranges her daughter's shoes outside the family home in Indonesia, keenly aware that her son's shoes are no longer there. Two-year-old Umar Abu Bakar, who died from taking tainted calf syrup in the country. When Umar fell ill last year, Suhardiati brought him to a clinic where the doctor told her to give her child a paracetamol calf syrup. Umar's condition did not improve, but started having trouble urinating. Worried, Suhardiati moved her son to different hospitals, seeking treatment, but Umar died just two weeks later. Kaget, nggak uh, nyangka gitu. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream. And it all happened so quickly, since the first day when he felt sick until the day he died. It was so fast, only two weeks. As there was no information about this illness, we kept asking what caused this and what did I do wrong. All the questions that were always in my head because he had always been fine and nothing was wrong with him since he was born. <laughs> About 200 children have died of acute kidney injury in Indonesia since last year and authorities have said two ingredients, ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol found in some syrup-based paracetamol medications are linked to the illness. The two ingredients are used in antifreeze break fluids and other industrial applications but also a cheaper alternatives in some pharmaceutical products to glycerin, a solvent or thickening agent in many cough syrups. They can be toxic and can lead to acute kidney injury. Suhardiati is one of 25 families filing a class action lawsuit to sue the health and finance ministries, the drugs regulator and at least eight drugs companies to demand restitution for their children who died due to the tainted cough syrup. An Indonesia court started hearing their case. Saya berharap yang berbuat macam I hope those who have done bad things will get punishment to pay for what they did. I also hope the system improves, and if there are problems like this, they can handle them quickly and won't be so clueless. Representatives of the finance ministry and five pharmaceutical companies named in the suit did not respond to requests for comment. Another three companies could not be reached. The country's drugs regulator, BPOM, said it would respect the ongoing legal process while the health ministry declined to comment. Authorities have banned several cough syrups and mounted legal action against several pharmaceutical companies whose products allegedly contain the dangerous ingredients. Suhardiati said, apart from demanding justice and accountability, the loss of her son had left her with a deep grief. Philippe Nobel laureate Ressa exempted from tax evasion. 
Jad Said, Philippine Nobel laureate Maria Reza and her new side rapler were acquitted by a court of tax evasion charges, handing Reza a victory in a case the veteran journalist has described as part of the pattern of harassment. This acquittal, is not just for rappler, it is for every Filipino who has ever been unjustly accused. These charges, as you know, were politically motivated. They were incredible to us. A brazen abuse of power and meant to stop journalists from doing their jobs. The tax evasion case stemmed from accusations by the state revenue agency that Rapler had omitted from its tax returns the proceeds of a 2015 sale of depository receipt to foreign investors, which later became the securities regulator's basis to revoke its license. Reza, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize alongside a Russian journalist in 2021, is head of Rapler, which earned a reputation for its depth reporting and tough scrutiny of former president Rodrigo Duterte and his deadly war on drugs. Malaysian artisan keeps lion hat making tradition alive for Lunar New Year. CEO, a Malaysian of Chinese descent, has spent almost 40 years handcrafting heads of lion dance troops across Malaysia, an art form prized by the ethnic Chinese minority in the country. According to CEO, although it's commonly performed during lunar year, the number of traditional lion head artisans had dwindled over the decades, with just 10 left in Malaysia and only 5 warehouses crafting the heads remaining. To me, it is a type of culture. It will never just disappear unless you give it up. Actually, I believe that even if you give it up, others will still preserve this profession. So in that way, when it comes to our trade of making lion heads, it will never be lost. So if I don't do it today, someone will do it tomorrow. It comes down to your responsibility of making it the best it can be. Despite its Chinese origin, Malaysian lion dance is recognized around the world for its intricate, often acrobatic performances as well as for coming out on the top in several international competitions. David Chen Po, a French national based in Reunion Island, came to Selangor to learn from Xiao about lion dance while finishing his thesis. Foxan lion dance style is the lion dance style we used in Reunion Island. So it was uh, coming here was a good occasion to also learn about him and uh, his his own style of Hoksan lion dance. It's a really fierce style. Xiao and his team made over 400 heads throughout 2022 and delivered them to the clients in Malaysia and abroad following the easing of restrictions and reopening of borders in late 2021. One dead and seven missing in oil tanker fire in Thailand. According to officials, one person died and seven were missing after a fire broke out on a oil tanker ship in Thailand Samut Songkram province. A live stream from social media showed thick black plumes of smoke billowing from Smooth Sea 22, an oil tanker station southwest of capital Bangkok, as water was being sprayed from shore and smaller boats onto the ship. A loud blast was heard before the fire and shook nearby neighborhoods. Thai authorities reported that one person has been killed as well as four injured and seven missing. The regions of the blast are yet to be confirmed. According to the Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Provincial Office of Samut Songkram Province, most of the victims are welders from Myanmar as the ship was undergoing repairs at the time of the blast. Drone footage show extent of damage on oil tanker ship blast. Drone footage showed the extent of the damage on oil tanker ship where an explosion has killed at least one and injured several others in Bangkok, southwestern Samut Songkram province. The aerial footage showed small fires still burning inside the ship as firefighters tried to contain the flame. Thai authorities reported that one person has been killed while revising the number of injured to 10. 
Meanwhile, Puripat Darakul Pisot, the deputy director of the Marine Department, said there were a total of 16 persons on board. Rescuers are also searching for the missing. The origin of the blast are yet to be confirmed. According to the Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Provincial Office of Samut Songkram Province, most of the victims are welders from Myanmar as the ship was undergoing repairs at the time of the blast. The Vietnamese president resigned for violations and irregularities of officials. The country's official news agency said Vietnam's president Nguyen Son Phuc has resigned after the ruling Communist Party found him responsible for violations and wrongdoing of numerous officials under him. Phuc, 68, a former prime minister, has held the largely ceremonial position for less than two years. It was not immediately clear who would replace him. There was widespread speculation about Puk's resignation following January's dismissal of two deputy prime ministers who were working under him when he led the government. To become effective, Puk's resignation requires approval from the National Assembly. Reuters on Monday, January 16, reported the legislature will hold a rare extraordinary meeting this week. Vietnam has no paramount ruler and officially led by four pillars, the powerful party secretary, the president, the prime minister, and the chair of the parliament. Phuc was selected in April 2021 as the president, the state's second most prestigious job after that of General Secretary of the Communist Party. He was promoted as president after having served for five years as a pro-business prime minister, when he oversaw a further acceleration of the country's trade liberalization with the signing of historic deals with the European Union and Pacific powers including Japan and Australia. Cambodian experts train Ukrainians in demining techniques. A team of Ukrainians learned the mining techniques from experts at the Cambodian Mine Action Center at the minefield in Cambodia's northwest Batambang province. The team of 15 Ukrainians were led to a minefield where CMAC officials demonstrated the detection and controlled detonations of several mines on site. Arseny Diachenko, a demining expert from the State Emergency Service of Ukraine, said the training was helpful and interesting. The team of Ukrainians will now travel to Siem Reap to visit a landmine museum. So it's very helpful training. It was so interesting for us because because it's uh, ground penetration radars, Alice. It's very uh, it's very important uh, how to know how to provide the mining, how to operate uh, by them, and it's uh, it was very quickly and fast. But I think our officers are, are so intelligent for operating these uh, metal detectors and ground penetration radar, radars in Ukraine. And it, it will be very helpful for uh, clean our territory from Russian mines. And you look over. CMAC officials said that Cambodia plans to send its experts to Poland in the near future to train Ukrainians. Since Russia invaded Ukraine last February, the country has been working on clearing thousands of mines left across its territory. The conflict has shown no sign of letting up and Ukrainian officials have previously said it may take five to seven years to complete all the mining procedures across the country. Cambodia has one of the highest number of mine amputees per capita in the world. The country has dispatched experts across the world to help with land mine clearing. South Korean president calls for strengthening resilience of global supply chains. South Korea's president, Yoon suk yeol called for strengthening the resilience of global supply chains, describing it as one of the most urgent tasks facing the international community. Yoon made the remarks at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, saying the war in Ukraine has further disturbed the stability of supply chains. The South Korean president said free trade remains important despite growing protectionism and vow to work with trustworthy countries to stabilize global supply chains. Also referring to the climate crisis, Yoon said South Korea will gradually seek carbon neutrality by expanding the use of nuclear energy and that Seoul was willing to cooperate with other countries that need nuclear power technologies. 
Chinese government helped search for survivors after the death of eight people in the Tibet avalanche. The state-run media CCTV reported that at least eight people were killed following an avalanche in the city of Linzi in the southwestern region of Tibet, and the Chinese government has sent a team to oversee help in recovering bodies and the missing. According to the Xinhua News Agency, the avalanche occurs on a section of road between Pai Village in Mainling County and the exit of the Doshongla Tunnel in Medo County, with people and vehicles stranded. The state media-backed Global Times reported that local authorities have sent 131 people and 28 vehicles to the scene overnight. Chinese Ministry of Emergency Management also dispatched a working group to the southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region. Thank you very much everyone for having watched today's episode. We'll see you soon. Stay safe and stay healthy.